I'm sure so I knew about that. And also, Masaba, how conscious are you about your production uh, when it comes to sustainability and ethical fashion? Thank you. So, um, for me, I think now I've made it a point that I have the most easiest wardrobe to manage. Uh, I've kept my personal clothing to the bare minimum because I realize I like to wear only four pants and I keep rotating that like everybody else. And um, um, But for my work, yes, I keep needing different kind of clothes and as and when I procure what I need. But in today's times, I've actually been interacting with a few designers closely. Uh, from Masaba to Rahul Mishra to Gaurav Gupta, uh, Nita Lulla. And I feel like they are people who are, who have been so instrumental in, you know, putting out India on, you know, on the world map. Um, and I make sure, like when I was talking to Rahul, his previous collection itself was inspired by uh, nature. So, uh, and the superheroes were insects, for example, which I thought was a beautiful thought and idea. And just to know his idea of sustainability. So I'm actually educating myself uh, while I'm also uh, making choices where I take in only what I need and not excessively splurge on things that I don't think I can reuse. Because I feel like uh, it can never be enough. So it's best to minimize what you can actually use and uh, I'm being conscious of that. Yeah. I think uh, for me, you know, when you're running the fashion label, um, to be very honest, it's very difficult to be 100% sustainable. If you see some of the largest brands in the world, including H&M, uh, have pledged to be sustainable many, many years down the line. I'm talking about maybe a decade later. Um, it's because one, it requires money, and two, it is something that is, you know, the thing is, not being sustainable has actually penetrated so deep into fashion, into society, that we have to undo a lot of that. And that takes a lot longer than actually saying, I'd like to be a sustainable label. Uh, at a very basic level, as a brand, we make small changes every day to how we look at sustainability. And fashion is one of the biggest polluters of the world. We all know that. There's no denying that. Um, having said that, when we have all the waste fabric that's left over after a garment is made, we call it katran, it's just pieces of fabric that you can't really do anything with. We started to make little scrunchies and hairbands, so we make little scarves, we started to make masks during COVID uh, out of that fabric. We started to also make sure there was a system of that waste to be picked up and recycled and made into something else. That was one. Um, a couple of years back, I had the opportunity to tie up with the United Nations Environment Program, where we actually uh, worked with them closely to understand single-use plastic, which is actually the single biggest polluter uh, worldwide. And it's nothing. It's the plastic bag you use to go to the vegetable market to buy sabzi and fruit and whatever. And it's, you know, the little things that you use every day, you just quickly discard it. So today, for example, even as a human being, when I'm going to a nature's basket to you know, stock up the house, I'm not taking a plastic bag. I'm consciously saying I will take the same muslin tote that I've been using over and over again. Having said that, coming back to the UNEP uh, collection that we did, we made a collection of garments that, so for example, the sleeve could be zipped off and it would fold up and it would become a carry bag. You know, so we had about, I think, a 20-25 piece collection that we did with them in collaboration to educate people about how single-use plastic is the biggest polluter. There are many different types of fabrics which are actually not as big polluters of the world as that. Um, another thing I'll tell you is in the beauty industry, there's a lot of noise about the cartons that go uh, that are shipped when you're buying a single lipstick. For example, you buy a lipstick that big and the carton is that big. Or you buy a nail paint that, that that's that much and you have a carton that's that much. You know, people can say things over and over again about how it shouldn't be that big a box, it should be smaller, etc., etc. The fact of the matter is, if you don't have that big a box, and you don't fill it up with bubble wrap and 
all these things to pad it, your product will come to you damaged. And we haven't reached there yet where we have a sustainable enough option to give you packaging that won't damage that product in a smaller box, for example. We're getting there. We make changes every day. Uh, all of my beauty products are, um, you know, recyclable, the packaging. So I think in small ways we make amends, but to be 100% sustainable, it's a long journey and it's one that we've all embarked on. But I, I see that it's not something that can happen in the near future. And I don't want to just say it because it's a cool marketing gimmick, but uh, it's a long journey and we, we've taken it on. And as and when we have the capital, as and when we have the means and we have uh, the acceptance from consumers, we will take it head on.